Hey there again, mini boxers. I want to show you a couple things, if especially if you're interested in the 303 type things you can do with sequencers and such. I have a somewhat 303-ish monophonic sound set up on my Ambika, and I made a little eight-step pattern. And we'll hit the start button here. I'll turn down the drums a little bit. So, got eight steps. Everything's the same. Um, look at the velocity. Whoops. The velocities, they're all the same. The little bars next to the notes and the durations are all the same. So what we can do is on the synthesizer, in this case the MBK, you can set it for a monophonic patch, set it to legato and put some some portamento in. So whenever, it's called fingered portamento, and whenever two notes overlap, it will play portamento. And if they don't overlap, it won't play the portamento. So right now, since nothing overlaps, we'll go back and look at the uh, durations and we'll hit it play again. And note that I've got a big gap between the G1 there and the C2, and then the G3. So those three notes are a long ways away from each other, so they're a good, good place to put a slide so you can really hear it. So go back to the lengths and hit play. I'm going to shorten a bunch of these up and then take this one and you hear the slide in there, take it back out, Put one here, and on the synth, on the Ambika, I can turn the um, portamento down. Or up. And put more slides in by there's with no portamento. There's with a bunch. Notice that the Ambika has to choose how much portamento there is. This basically just turns it on and off, like any sequencer would do. I also set up this patch so that if I change the velocity, which is all the same now, that will affect the uh, amount of filter envelope. And of course it only affects it on the first note if there's a pair of them tied together with a slide. Can't really hear it that well. Let's turn the amount of that up and, open, and close the filter up a little bit. There, now you can really hear the difference between a note that has the uh, velocity up and velocity not up. Now, if you really want to do 303 sounds, there's an even better way, and that is holding down the edit button, and you get three choices. Step view, which you've been playing with, trigger and layer view, which I think we've looked at a little bit, but there's also 303 view, so if I hold down the edit, push 303 view, yeah, I'm going to stop this for a second. So very similar to a 303, you can choose your step, whether there's a gate 
whether there's an accent, whether there's a glide, which octave, and which note, and then the velocity and the length. Now if you can see my lengths are already in glides there, but I'm going to turn those off. This is just a different way of viewing the same data that you see other places. Now even though my lengths are short enough so there's no portamento, I can go to a step and hit glide and it'll do the same thing. It doesn't change the length but it does put in a glide. I'm not really sure how in the data that works but it somehow holds it and keeps it from um, from re-triggering the envelopes and lets it do the glide. And then once you're in here you can um, play with the octaves. And we can also go into the direction. One of my favorites, put them into pendulum. So anyway, that's another view you can use if you want to make these little 303 patterns. Hold down the edit button. And that will give you three I mean, your four views. You can push the one, go back to step view. Whoop. There you go. Or one of the other ones to look at trigger view, layer view, or in this case, 303 view. It is a pretty fun way to make patterns. So check that out if you're into making those kind of noises.